Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBabeCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to make the Easy Breezy Ripple Baby Blanket. Uh, for this blanket I used a self-striping yarn. I'll be showing you that in just a minute. But I just wanted to show you just how lovely the colors come out automatically without having to hide loose ends. Actually, there's just a couple loose ends I had to hide and that would be the beginning string and the ending string, which was pretty cool. Um, for this particular project, you're only going to need to know how to do the chain and the double crochet and I believe that's it. Uh, we're, we will learn how to make a decrease, a double crochet decrease using three stitches and how to make an increase also using three double crochet stitches. So even if you are a reasonably new beginner, I believe this is a very accomplishable project. Um, the size of the baby blanket is approximately 28 inches wide by approximately 29 inches long. Um, of course, you can make the baby blanket as long or as short as you'd like, um, depending on your crochet style. Okay, if you're looking for the pattern for this, you can always check out my Ravelry page. The links are below in the description of the video um, should you desire to have the pattern. Um, I do recommend, if, if you can, get a copy just so that you have practice in reading along as I teach. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I'm going to be using this color yarn. It's um, a multicolor. You don't have to have this kind of yarn. Um, you can have whatever you have on hand. And if in case you're looking for this, this is actually yarn by Lion Brand Company. Um, it's called Cream Glacy, if I'm saying that right. And the stats on this, there are 1,022 meters or 1,117 yards in this particular um, uh, scan. This is a light weight yarn. It's a number three. Um, often called DK weight. Um, then I'm going to be using 100% acrylic and the color is strawberry should you be interested in trying to get that from Lion Brand and you can get it right there from them lionbrand.com or check your local uh, craft store. Um, you also are going to need a crochet hook. I'm recommending size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter. And I think it's also great to have a yarn needle on hand, although you're not going to be hiding a lot of uh, loose ends with this, probably just two, but it's always great to have one. And when you finish, you might need a pair of scissors. Okay, now let me just say one more thing about yarn, that if you wanted to use a, let's say, a, a, a four weight yarn, which would be a worsted weight like Red Heart Super Saver or something like that, um, you're welcome to do that. If you happen to do that, I would encourage you to bump up to a size J, I'm sorry, a size I or 9, or even possibly a size J hook, depending on the yarn that you choose. The blanket will be larger, but it would still be just... Um, you know, just as usable. Uh, however, I would encourage you to choose a yarn that is very soft for the baby, as well as yarn um, that is washable, uh, machine washable, and maybe even dryable, just considering the needs of a young baby. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. And I'll do that kind of slowly because i assuming many of you are beginners, and I want you to be able to, to get this. Okay, so a slip knot. Now we're going to make a chain of 128. Um, this is a lot of chains, yes, uh, and it's very important that you chain them uh, normal to almost a little bit on the loose side. Not real, real loose, but you don't want them real tight. If you tend to be a crocheter that makes your um, chains very tight, I'm going to suggest that you bump up to a larger size, maybe a size I or 9, just for the chain, and then switch back to your smaller hook once we start working our double crochets. But anyway, we're going to chain 128, and the way I like to do this is in multiples of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I'll reposition my non-dominant hand here that holds the yarn. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then I just do that by fives and that way if someone says hey mom will you get me such and such um, I have a rough idea what my stitch I'm sorry what my stitch count is and um, if it's a multiple of five I can usually figure it out um, if you know what I'm talking about because it's it's a shame to have like 110 stitches on your 
crochet hook and then someone interrupts you and then you forget what your stitch count is and you have to do it all over again so anyway so i usually do it multiples of five and i'm going to go ahead and finish to 128. now we're going to start row one we're going to skip the first two stitches one two and we're going to work two double crochets in the next chain one two now we're going to work one double crochet in the next three chains one two three now we're going to do something interesting called working three double crochets together and this is how that's done we wrap our hook like we're going to do a double crochet, stick it in the chain or the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and just pull through two. Don't complete the stitch yet. And do that two more times. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And do that one more time. Yarn over, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now you should have four loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all four loops we're going to do that two times and this actually is what's causing will cause the the valley of that chevron the v effect we're going to do that again yarn over insert into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over insert into the next chain pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and one more time yarn over insert into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two now we're going to yarn over again and pull through all four loops on the hook now we're going to work a sing i'm sorry a double crochet and the next three stitches so just a double crochet it's one two three now what we just did here would be referred to as decreasing because you're changing three stitches into one and that causes the stitch to go down or the the pattern to start forming already now for the top of the chevron we're going to do two stitches where we increase we're going to work three double crochets in the next stitch And we're going to do that in the next stitch as well three double crochets in the next stitch one two three okay now we're going to do um, one double crochet in the next three stitches one two three now we're going to do two of the double crocheting three double crochets together that's one two three just like we did before four loops on the hook yarn over draw through all four loops and we're going to do that again yarn over insert into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over insert our hook into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over hook into that stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two now you should have four loops on the hook yarn over pull through all four so let's take a look at what we've gotten so far okay do you see where we're headed with this it's going to be a nice smooth chevron now after those two um, double crochet three together stitches we work a double crochet in the next three stitches now we're going to work the top of the chevron which is three double crochets in the next stitch And then three double crochets in the next stitch as well okay. 
Now we're going to go down, double crochet in the next three stitches. And then after that, it's time to work another, some more of those um, double crochet three together stitches. After you get those four loops on that hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and do that again. Yarn over pull through all four stitches on the hook. Now let's stop and see what we have. So after just a little bit of stitching, this is what we are getting, and that's what you want. You want the up and down, up and down of the chevron. So I'm gonna have you work this all the way across. I will show you how to end the last several stitches. So go ahead over most of this 128 stitch chain and then I will help you at the end. One more tidbit as you're working across this chain. Do make sure that when you work in the chain that you just work in the same um, section of the chain each time because what you don't work in is, is going to be seen at the bottom of your design. Okay, so you want it to look nice and you want it to look even. Um, I prefer to work on just one of the, if you see the, the stitch as kind of a V, I like to work on one side consistently. Um, some people like to work in the back bump of the chain. If that's you, feel free to do that. I find that a little more difficult and time consuming, and I have no problem with the results when I work in just the one side. So just wanted to put a little hint there for you um, to just um, you know make sure that you're doing this evenly and you're putting your hook in the same place each time in that chain. And I promise you, that once you get through this particular row, it actually gets easier once you have more stitching to grab onto and inserting our hook into these other stitches is going to be much faster and easier than what you're working right now. I've come to the last four chains and I'm gonna, after working the two groups of three double crochets together, I'm gonna work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches, one, two, three, like that, and I'm going to work three double crochets into that last chain, and that will end this row. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. It's going to be a little twisted, but that's okay. You should have one, two, Actually, you should have nine chevrons in a row. Now, as far as the yarn color, if you wanted to make it solid colors and you know change the, the yarn every couple rows to make colored stripes, that's up to you. That's fine. I'm just I just like using the variegated colors for things like this. It's just a lot of um, easy crocheting for me and it's very relaxing. So now we're ready to begin the second row and this is the row that you're going to repeat throughout the entire length of this afghan. I'm going to chain three, I'm going to turn, and we're going to work two double crochets in that first stitch and I'm going to show you why. In this pattern stitch, this double, I'm sorry, this turning chain, chain three, does count as a double crochet. So we're going to consider that one, two, three stitches here. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And in the next three stitches, we're going to work three double crochets together. Just like that. And when you have those four loops on your hook, go ahead and yarn over and pull them through. And we're going to do that another time. So you're always going to do two of these when you get down into the valley of that chevron. Do three double crochets together. After you get those four loops, yarn over, pull through all four loops, double crochet in the next 
three stitches one two three and then we're going to work three double crochets in each of the next two stitches So that's three there, and then three in the next stitch. One, two, three. I'm going to show you this one more time, and then I'm going to have you work it across the row. Now we're going to do three, one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, let's go through all the strands there. Two, three and now it's time for the two um, crocheting three double crochets together okay we have four loops on the hook yarn over pull through all four and do that one more time yarn over, pull through all four loops on the hook, and now it's time for those three double crochets, one, two, and three. And you see once the pattern is established, you know that you're getting to the tippy top of that chevron here, so you know after those three stitches, one in each stitch, you're going to work three double crochets in the next two stitches, so three double crochets there and then three double crochets in the next stitch as well so go ahead and work this all the way across and then I will show you how the row ends once we come to the end of row two we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next three double crochets and this should be the last three actual double crochets but remember I said that that chain three counts as a stitch actually it's a chain two there but we're going to go ahead and we're going to work three double crochets in that chain just like that and that's actually going to make the side look straight once we get going but let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here now I, I do want to say something about the variation in the color um, this is not going to be one of those completely um, symmetrical kind of um, projects as far as the color goes but I don't want you to worry about that if you're choosing the same color as me because um, it will definitely add interest for the baby's eyes and if something is not perfectly symmetrical I promise you it's going to give the baby something to focus on and believe it or not I even have memories as a child um, looking at a quilt that somebody made for me and it had plenty of imperfections in it um, lots of different fabrics and honestly I, I just have very good feelings from remembering that and I still have the uh, project in my closet I may show you at some point in a future video but um, just know that even if it's not a perfectly done project that maybe your stitches oh I missed counted or I, they're not perfectly even and whatever it doesn't matter because it's going to be very interesting for the baby to look at no matter what okay I just wanted to encourage you along that way and um, even if your work isn't perfect don't worry about that you're you're learning you're growing and and if you complete the project it's going to bless somebody no matter no matter what so anyway just a word of encouragement there let's go on to the next row which is going to be exactly the same as the last I'm going to just show you this we're going to chain three I'm going to show you the beginning of this row and then I'm going to just set you free to just um, continue these rows until the blanket becomes as long as you like if you get a little confused you can always go back and look at row number two I'll have it clearly labeled in this video so you can just back it up to row number two and start your next row which is going to be the same as all the rest okay so we have chain three work two double crochets 
in that first stitch. And then now we begin our pattern. One double crochet in the next three stitches. Get some yarn. I think I need to hire me a professional yarn puller so I can go a little faster. Okay, so now the next, we come to that valley in the chevron. So we're going to work three double crochets together. Yarn over, pull through all four stitches. We're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, pull through all four stitches or all, all four loops. After those two sets of three double crochets, crochet together. One double crochet in the next three stitches. And you know what to do now. We're at the crest of that chevron, so we're going to do three double crochets in the next stitch. Okay, and then three more double crochets in the next stitch. And that is the pattern you're going to repeat over and over again. So go ahead and finish this row and just keep on row after row. Again, if you get stuck, you can always back this up and look at row two again. It's the same as every row that we're going to do. So I'll show you what I have after I've gotten some length on this blanket. After working 28 rows, this is what this is what I'm getting. This lovely variation in color um, throughout. I think this is going to be really nice and because I'm using a slightly larger hook, which again is the size H uh, for this yarn, it's going to make it kind of nice and soft. It won't be really, really tight. It'll be nice and loose and, and, and feel very flexible. So I just wanted to show you where I am, and I am just continuing on the same rows that I just showed you, just con continuing with row number two over and over again. And I'm going to continue this until the baby blanket is approximately 25 to 30 inches long. I'm going to kind of go with it until I get it to be 25 inches long and see if I like it. And then if I want to make it a little bit longer, I'm going to make it a little bit longer. So I just encourage you to continue on and I'll show you a bigger view of what I have once I get a little further down the road on this project. After working 48 rows, I've decided that this blanket is the length that I am very happy with. It's approximately a square. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten it off. And this is how you do that. You just Make a chain, I guess I can pull it through a little better, Make pull it tight, and now I'm going to get my scissors right here and cut a strand. I'm going to leave at least, you know, four to six inches or so, and then pull it through just like that. Now we do have a couple strands that we need to hide, and that's what's nice about using the self-striping yarn is um, I'm only going to have really two of these strands to deal with instead of a whole bunch. So I'm going to go thread my yarn needle just like so. And since this blanket is totally reversible, it really doesn't matter, you know, which side you hide the thread on, but you do want to be careful that you hide the thread carefully. I'm going to bring it down like this. And you want to try to hide the strand um, in stitches that are of a similar color. So I'm going to just run this under a few stitches here right down the middle of the stitch, kind of where they are crocheted. And I could cut it there, but I'm going to I'm going to actually run it under a few more. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and carry this down to the join, I believe. Or down where the three cluster is. Just run it under there, and you're not going to notice this at all. And I'm going to cut it close to where it's hidden, give it a little tug, and that strand is gone forever. And it's long enough, um, it will not, you know, pull out 
because of the friction amongst the stitches. And even if it does, there'll be enough of it to hide again. But it, it trust me, that's not going anywhere and nobody is going to see that. Just take another quick look at the colors in this. Now that we're, we are done, I do have a couple more strands to hide, but um, I'll do those shortly. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you do, please give that little subscribe button a click and we will have more projects coming your way, both beginning projects and some intermediate projects. And, and let me just say one thing about that. Do not be afraid to try some of those intermediate projects. Once you are comfortable working double crochet and single crochet and they are reasonably, doesn't have to be perfect, just reasonably um, even, um, give some of those intermediate projects a try. Um, you'll be surprised how easy they, they are. They may look complicated, but once you take it row by row, it really is much easier than you think. Well, anyway, that's all for now. Just wanted to say God bless you and um, take care. Bye-bye.